questionable, a lot of questions. Questionable from his team, questionable from, from the Twitter fans, um, going up against Ken. At the same time, it was questionable, but it was a crew battle. Um, maybe the Buzz did not really care how much America won. I don't think, I think it was fun. that. What I heard, what I heard was um, some some inside information was that DeBuzz was, was reluctant to use Rosa because he didn't want any of the Japanese players getting a read on him for, for today's event. And he is confident in his Olimar. He said that he's talk, talk, talked about dropping Rosa for Olimar. I remember watching, seeing that on his Twitter feed, actually. Um, now, <laughs> I, I approve I, of the I wrote Rosa instead of DeBuzz <laughs> on my notes, so clearly he's going to go Rosa. <laughs> but DeBuzz was just in Japan, so they obviously did have to have some type of read on him, unless he has some new tech that he's just been working on. And, you know, this is going to be a battle of, you know, of stamina at this point because Sonic has the tools to run. The Buzz has the tools to keep any character in the game out. And Just the, the biggest challenge here for both of these players, as you mentioned, is going to be stamina. You, you have to maintain that full level of, of high play. Like, you, you, like every single moment, every single interaction is crucial in this matchup because errant damage is no good. Yeah, and especially with the the way Sonic works where, you know, he hits you once and you might take 30% because of the conversion. Same thing though with Rosalina. You, not only might you get hit once to take 30, you might get hit and die off the top. Exactly. So you can't stress that enough that every hit matters so much in this matchup. Now, obviously it isn't the same level of play, but the local Wisconsin Sonic main, Pow Pow, um, has actually had a lot of success against the Roses of the Midwest. Um, he's, he's taken down Knight. He's taken down Crazy Colors. Um, he, he's done a lot of good work. So, you know, watching those matches, you see the tools that Sonic has against Rosa. That's movement. That is, you know, aerials that can 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 weave in and around Luma, and the ability to get rid of Luma um, with the with the strong knockback moves that he has. So, those are going to be the keys for Ken. Definitely going to be the keys, things that he's going to want to try to use to maybe change the tides in his favor. But I, I, when I think of the buzz, I actually I don't call him a Rosalina man anymore because he is the only Rosalina to do what he does. Exactly. Nowhere in the world do you see a Rosalina that consistently places not just top eight, but top five. So it, it's kind of reminiscent of Sheik. Yeah. There's two Sheiks essentially in the world right now at that level of play. So... When people always talk about Rosalina, I have to always point out, let's not forget that the Buzz is the only one oh, doing yeah. what he, he does. He's, he's on another level. I mean, we, we, we've said it once, we've said it again. He, he's the hungry box of, of Smash 4 in that he's the only one to get these amazing top-level results with that character. He almost has the same storyline, too. Started off as a villain, yeah. and then next thing you know, people are chanting out Luma <laughs> in, yeah. in a Genesis crowd. I mean, you, you have to wonder if Ken is going to be prepared for this or not. I mean, I'm sure because Kirahara is here, and, and that mean, and, and you know the the, the 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 Japanese players who came out in force. You know, we had 11 members of the Japanese um, Smash team come out to to Frostbite. You have to imagine that once Ken found out that he was going to go up against the Buzz, um, they they bonded together as Japan is wont to do, um, and practiced Rosalina all night. It wouldn't definitely make a lot of sense. In the Buzz, you know, there is no Sonic here on Ken's level. You could argue Seagull Joe or Supergirl Kells, but I mean, Komo Rikiri has a dang good Sonic, but he's mostly known now for Cloud. So yeah. Ken, Ken is really the Sonic of Japan. Like, there's there's no one, and, and no no you know disrespect to either of those players that you mentioned, but Ken is just, again, another level of player. Yeah, and with that said, you know, we might be wrong because Seagull Joe is still in winners, if I'm not mistaken. That's true, that's true. <laughs> so who knows, but right now, Ken trying to stay in winners, 77% right now, DeBuzz making every hit count. So meticulous with the placements of his attacks. And he gets caught in between Rosa and Luma there, and that's a bad place to be. And you know, you have to say, DeBuzz, maybe you did make a wise choice not using Rosalina <laughs> in a crew battle right now if you're going to take 8% and take a stock off of Ken. And you know, Ken's being rather aggressive, at least for the Sonics that we're used to seeing. It's only been a minute into the match and the stock has been taken. That is not the norm in a match involving Sonic in America. And that's actually something too that we um, that we saw was it was is Ken plays you know a mix-up style. He you know he's about halfway between the Supergirl Kells aggressive style and the Wrath defensive style. Um, but he seems to be going all aggression here, and it's just not working out for him. I, I don't know. Maybe he wants to get rid of Luma or what exactly the game plan is. But you know, a player of Ken's caliber, we would definitely see some adjustments made. 
during this match, as a matter of fact, starting off, Luma is gone for the first time in the, in the round. Yeah, and, and that's the key. I think if he can capitalize off some stuff here, but again, DeBuzz just so good at playing without Luma. I mean, he doesn't have the crowd chanting it down for him, but you know he knows. So all he has to do is play around for a couple of seconds, and then Luma's going to come back, and, uh, and her body card will come out, and uh, then it's right back to 10 out of 10 difficulty for Ken. Yeah, and it is there already. Ken, good roll right there, though. The bus scouting it out, shielding the attack, and then actually getting some uh, damage himself. The bus having no trouble landing right now. Uh, I, I do wonder if Ken is going to start throwing out forward airs while the bus is trying to land to maybe tack on some damage. Oh, great beefy up B and the late hit of back air there, just you know, inches above the ground, is going to deal some damage. Ken is, is starting to, to make some changes here. Is he one of those changes he grabbed? Um, yeah. Ken actually has not grabbed prior to that one. Did get him off the stage, and you know the buzz just got Luma back. I was gonna see what Ken could do prior to it happening. Oh, and a great back air there, keeping these guys separated. That's what you need to do: either get rid of Luma or keep him on opposite ends of the stage, because you can punish one before the other one's over to get get over there to help. Back Beautiful. air, so strong, and a great usage there because he noticed that the few times that he got the buzz off stage, he had been going sort of high with his recovery. And just the confidence displayed there. He went for the back air once without the buzz moving, and then he went for it again because he said, oh, I did it a little early, but I'm positive you're going to jump from this edge. And you know, the buzz, throwing out dash attacks, you know, it's looking like he wants to force his kill a little early. And you know, we were talking about the battle of stamina. Is the buzz losing it this early on into the round? Is now coming into play, possibly. I, I think it's less of that, that stamina because you know DeBuzz has got to be fresh here. He's been studying. He's been, you know, he's been working that laptop that he's so famous for. I think it's just Ken making mid-game mid adjustments that has really been the difference here. Realize that this aggression had to calm down a little bit. He had to wait for his openings. Oh, DeBuzz with the tricky setup, though. Ken evading it, not losing his stock because of it as well. And now Rose's damage is building. 52 to 134. And Ken, that's, it's so smooth when Sonics recover like that because they never actually grab the ledge and almost teleport onto the stage. Yeah, it's the closest thing we'll ever have to a wave dash. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken. Oh, that, that is a great choice of throw because it got rid of Luma and it put him in firm control of the stage. In 95, the buzz is in jeopardy of losing this game. He only took 8% when he got rid of Ken's first thought. Ken, the adjustments have been surreal. Yeah, and, w and with the rage that Sonic has, very nearly maximum, a back air at the ledge will probably do this. Oh! oh but down smash, a move that he had not used to that point in the game, is able to catch Ken rolling on unsafely. And just the reactions of the buzz recognizing the situation, he pulled the trigger so fast the moment he saw that opening. So, you know, it, it looked like it was going to be, you know, just a wash yeah. at the beginning, but Ken brought that all the way back, and DeBuzz has got to be, you know, got to try and close this out earlier. If you let Ken hang around, he's going to find a way to win. And he, he's demonstrating that already, and now DeBuzz, maybe he wants to pull out the laptop again, to be honest, because his game plan did work, um, but he was cutting it close. Ken made a tremendous comeback. So, you know, the buzz has to be running through his mind. What did he do differently? What adjustments did Ken make? And He's how can I close out this next game? He is he is he is sending a prayer to his to his waifu there. <laughs> praying for strength, praying for power. Dear waifu, may I get another victory under the belt for Renegades. <laughs> PS, I love you. Um back to final destination those two go. Yeah, Ken, it, it never seemed like it was the stage that caused him trouble. It was just DeBuzz straight up outplaying him in that first stock. Um, and now that it seems like his game plan is working, as long as DeBuzz doesn't make counter adjustments early enough, Ken can keep working the same style that brought him all the way back. And one thing already that DeBuzz was doing differently was he started walking a bit more, which is kind of how he started off the match last game, but it's not how he ended it. But, you know, Ken... Already firing back, targeting Luma significantly more in the um, beginning of this round than he did last round. And that's kind of what helped him close out that lead that the Buzz had last game. And uncharacteristic right there, Ken actually whiffing a grab and the Buzz not punishing him for it. He's normally really good with his punishes. Both of those things are actually uncharacteristic. Ken doesn't really whiff grabs all that much because he is the, he only really goes for grabs when he knows he feels like he can get it for sure. And then the Buzz missing a punish is, is something that we never see. Ooh, DeBuzz didn't get the strong hit of it, but he oh. is still juggling Ken. Ken was just air dodging all the way down, and, and 
you got to do something different, man. Like he'll, he'll that that Halo is just super dangerous, especially if Luma decides to get in the act. Ken putting the buzz above him. Great back air right there. Is he gonna go for an edge guard attempt? Yes, <laughs> yes, he does. Luma out of the fray. Um, Rosen now uh, again off stage. No bodyguard, and a very predictable recovery. But really smart usage of that second jump to the aerial to knock Ken away and gain stage control for himself. That was borderline genius by the buzz. Yeah. So. All right, Ken I mean, it wasn't, wasn't that the rumor forever? Is that the buzz was going to be on evil geniuses? <laughs> maybe, maybe they missed an opportunity because that truly was. But speaking of great opportunities, back air goes over Luma and kicks Rosa right in the face. You know, talk about you know Ken making adjustments. He took the first stock of the buzz, which is so different from the way last game went when the buzz only had 8% when he started his onslaught. Right, and 104 percent you know if Ken is not careful an up air will indeed take this stock maybe even a down smash from Rosalina yeah that down smash is what took him down in game one and because of you know the buzz is not reluctance but he just keeps that move in his back pocket if Ken's not careful when he goes for these cross-ups or roll behinds you know Rosa throws that out and it's gonna be the end speaking of throwing stuff out up smash almost takes it but not quite Luma didn't connect yeah, Sonic is very lucky right there that that was a one-on-one -on -one battle and not a 2v1 because Luma would have gotten rid of that stock. Oh, and there goes Luma. And he says, you know, you're absolutely correct. I was fortunate, so let me get rid of her and keep it a one-on-one -on -one battle. It was wisely just kind of mixing up his landing with that double jump and that nair. And just, you know, a beautiful drift right there. Oh, and smart Ken jumping back there. That up smash was locked and loaded. He had that scouted, though. He's got to watch out for it. He's been trying to cross up Rosa on shield. Rosa throws out an up smash. It will take him down. Who gets the trump, but not able to get the punish on Ken, but he does find the opening eventually. Yeah, he follows him all the way to the middle of the stage and gets that up air. That will take him down. And now we're not back to even because Ken has been all over to buzz so far in this game, too. But, you know... The, the more damage you put onto Rosalina specifically without ending that stock, the more the larger the risk you take for actually dying off the top very, very early. That's correct. Yeah, L Luma to Rosa, um, you know, if, if you send Rosa up, you still have to be very cognizant of where Luma is. We've seen many times a Luma hit into a Rosa up air kills super early. We, we've seen some heartbreakers because of that exact move. It does get the back air, and, you know, the buzz trying to make something happen, trying to get some momentum started, but Ken just... Alleviating the pressure, hits him once and runs away right after. We'll call it a strategic retreat. Because <laughs> not yeah, the onus is on DeBuzz here to have to come in. Like Ken, Ken isn't really like known for his timeouts, but you know when you're up, it means that your opponent has to come at you, and there's no reason for him to play that aggressive style that lost him game one. Basically, you're absolutely correct, but. He might want to get a little more aggressive because Luma will be coming into play soon. And at 51%. Speaking of aggression, back air takes him down. Good call, Logic, and good call, Ken. Great stuff. It's just straight back to Final Destination. And, you know, the buzz is going to have to dig deep, going to have to really analyze what occurred towards the end of game number one and game number two. And so far, um, uh, you know, big thing with Smash 4 only having two stocks is that uh, we've seen nine games played so far in this top 48, and all but one has been in the favor of who took the first stock. So taking that first stock against this high level of competition is so clutch because the, the player quality means that you're not going to be able to come back. Yes. I mean, it's you can do it. It is very difficult, though, as you just said. I mean, it's already you know? difficult to beat them. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you, it's like you're on the Titanic. You hit the iceberg. You're sinking. And then, then, then all of a sudden you see like a, a pot of orcas ready to eat you. <laughs> like That's what happens when you lose that first stock. Yeah, and part of it is just because these players, once you get to a certain level, they just understand the ins and outs so well and they just they stop leaving openings you know they're they take a couple risks here and there to make things happen but once they have things in their favor they understand that the, the approaching player the one that's losing right now has to take the risk and they just avoid any opportunities and, and risk alleviation is actually the one thing that i think that top players have to have to get to that top player status is knowing how to mitigate the risk that they have and and lessen all of the opportunities they have for the opponent to get a punish to get an opening to get a combo stuff like that if they can do like the best risk management um it, it's crazy and that's why ally is such a unique thing that we saw because he just he takes risk and it works for him but these two players very crisp very methodical and that's what we're seeing that's why this is such a close match and you actually see that every time both these players recover Oh, wait, is the buzz going to get the punish? All right, not quite yet. But both these players, even the buzz, a lot of Rosalinas will either up B or they're double jumping up air. The buzz will jump as if he was going to up air just so his opponent, you know, backs up a little bit and then just grab the ledge. 
and it makes it very tricky. And you know, risk alle alleviation. It's it's not said better. 96 to 72 percent right now. Hey, but you know, the buzz has a lead. Gets that down smash, just tacking on that damage bit by bit. And we've only seen about three down smashes from Debuzz. He is keeping that in his back pocket for any situation where he can pull it out. Does good damage with it there. And now has basically stayed in the center stage since that moment. And it, it seems like Kent has caught on to the jab that Debuzz and Rosalina do like to use often. And he's now just spin hopping over it in between Luma and Rosalina. Because that jab has been stopping the spin dash of Sonic. But you know, ooh, gets rid of Luma. Down tilt, down tilt. It does indeed happen. The buzz does get the back though, 149% on Sonic. Without Luma, is the buzz going to be able oh, to close it out? Great chase down from the buzz there, realizing that Ken was was you know apt to go to the other side of the stage um, often and just you know win all in to get to keep stage control, not let Ken get down on the ground. And Ken, you know, just firing right back. He is saying he's at 160%, but not playing like it. The buzz finally does find that opening and nets himself the first stock of the game. Luma, Luma coming in clutch. Yeah, and speaking of Luma, she was not clutch right there. Ken just completely <laughs> going through her and Luma letting him right by. <laughs> it was like that. Luma's like my B, Rose. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. B. <laughs> I opened the door for our boy. But, you know, Ken trying to hit Luma and the bus scouting it out, getting an extra little percent on it, and every percent counts when you're at such a high level. Oh, and there goes Luma. Surprisingly, that, that weak hit of the move knocks, knocks her off. And or knocks, knocks him off. Excuse me. Luma's a boy. I got, I got lit up on Twitter last <laughs> time I messed that up. Um, but now this is where Ken has really been making his living is once Luma's gone. That is something that we, we saw, what was it, like three seconds before he lost his first stock in game one was the first time Luma disappeared. Um, and so, yeah, now it's we're definitely going to be up to Ken to keep getting rid of this Luma and keep getting to buzz at his weakest moments to try and take the stock. He's at 160. He's got to find it soon. He does, because, you know, Rosalina's at max rage. We've seen the crazy knockback growth that Luma has. And he, you know, just hit the wrong oh. way, loses stock. And just like that, DeBuzz hit the wrong way. Back aired all the way, right side of the screen, off the left. And that was so good from Ken. He saw that Rosa um, was in a spot where she really had nothing to do. She was in that bounce when you hit that ground with, the, you know, no tech or no anything like that. And because of it, was able to get that real low back air and, uh, and take the stock. 74% deficit, though, is going to be difficult for him to come back on. Definitely going to be, but we've seen the adjustments. He, he's come back from worse. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's, game one was was a really you know great display of the adjustments that Ken can make. But I think the the buzz realizes like what caused him to, to lose that lead, and he's just going to shut it down in this one. And kudos to the buzz right there, juggling Ken without Luma, fearless, and just showing just how much of the game he understands. Because very rarely do you watch a Rosalina imposing their will without Luma. Yeah, Luma, Luma is basically like a secret service agent, like. We'll jump in front of a, jump in front of bullets, and it's just the, the 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 presence of protection. Like it's it's difficult to want to go. Oh my gosh! So Ken, that was the bravest thing I've yes. seen today. <laughs> and the buzz clearly thought he was gonna go on to the next game. Ken fully aware of the situation, understanding exactly the properties that Luma possesses. Oh, but speaking of properties that they possess, Luma getting jabbed out to cover that ledge, and uh, almost takes him down with a smash. Great. Ken doesn't get him off stage. Is Ken gonna go for an edge guard attempt? Throwing out back airs, not able to make anything happen quite yet, though. It's going to rinse and repeat. Try it again. Oh, and back air doesn't come in and doesn't hit. Unfortunately, you know, DeBuzz has gotten hit by that one too many times. Is going to try the best he can to never get hit by that move. He's going to try and make Ken work another kill option if he's going to get it. Oh! oh wow. He what gets it! Great follow. Speaking of different kill options. Well, in... That was something really unique. It couldn't have been timed better. The clock was winding down. We almost had a minute left on that game. And you know, Ken just pulled the trigger before he had to get too desperate. The, the buzz cannot be too happy about that. Everything was going in his favor until the end. Yeah, that, that's, that's a confidence destroyer. When you, you, know, you have a big lead, you feel like you're in control, you feel like you have a read on your opponent, and then you, know, you make one mistake, and, and, and that's what happens. I mean, granted, he, you know, I'm not saying he made a lot of mistakes. That's not DeBuzz. <laughs> DeBuzz is a very clean player. But uh, unfortunately, the last mistake that he made was what cost him the stock. It did. And, you know, it, it's really hard to even figure out how to really combat that. Because that trick came out of nowhere that he literally did that one time out of um, four games, essentially. Maybe three. We're going to call it four because I don't think he's going to do it again. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> 
I mean, it, it worked once. Why not try it again, you know? But no, d d that's the kind of thing. It's like, um, I don't know if you've ever played Arkham City, but there's a Mr. Freeze fight where you can't attack him the same way twice. That's how I feel like the buzz is. Like, you can't really go at him the same way twice because he'll just download that, bring it into his repertoire, and then you're like, well, that option is expelled. So luckily for Ken and, and his Sonic, Sonic does have a lot of options. Like, that's what yep. makes him such a great character. But he's got to make sure that he's using the right ones, using something that the buzz can't possibly expect. I, I do wonder if one thing that will come into play that Ken has not really explored yet is edge guarding Rosalina. Rosalina's recovery does not have a hitbox, and that's one of the things that you can kind of abuse about the character. So if he gets rid of that double jump, Rosalina just is, kind of has to sit there while Sonic tees off at her. Yeah, and, and the hope for you know Rosalina players when they get off stage like that is to try and get maybe a beefy up beer to try and like wait like or or drift a certain way to, to dodge it. But that's all she has. She has no other hope uh, other than you know just hoping that your opponent basically misses you. Um, and, and Sonic's got great edge guarding tools, especially, you know, he can end a, a match with that down air. If, if you catch him, like, off stage and he, re he recovers, you can two frame with the down air, you can catch him way off stage, and Sonic can still recover, so it's, it's basically riskless. Yeah. And, you know, as you were saying that, it seems like the buzz is starting to catch on to something before he was trying to jab while Ken was um, running in. But he started throwing out tilts, he started throwing out down smashes, and now throwing out up airs. It was not during the spin dash, but it still made his mark nonetheless. Yeah, and that mark means that, uh, unfortunately, Ken finds himself down a stock again. That's the third time in this set that he's lost his stock first. And we, we said earlier how difficult it is to come back. He was able to do it last game, but it's going to be difficult to do it this game because he has even less damage on the buzz than he did before. Good attempt right there by the buzz. Tried to down air the spin dash from Ken. Just understanding this is not working. He goes there to the down air you were just talking about. And he's up, the edge guard is coming through. Uh, he did not, was not able to get in position to drop another spring. But you know, he's exploring the option now. The buzz is going to feel that pressure. You know, and it's almost like this is kind of what Ken planned. Like he's like, he, he knows that he can't use the same option twice. So he's saving something new for every single game. But he does have to make sure he gets there right now. He is guaranteed at least one more game if he does fall. But obviously he wants to close that out now. Doesn't want to take that oh, chance. Oh, and he finally gets that down angled forward smash to take care of Rosa. He's been trying that very often, at least once per game, and he finally gets it in the most clutch possible moment. And it's actually the first time the buzz gave him the opening. Every other time, he always double jumped up with an attack, kind of just grabbed the ledge, but this time his double, he went for a double jump up air. Ken scouted it out and said, you know what? I'm looking at your next stock at this point. Uh-oh, that's not good, though. One thing that Sonic has a little bit of difficulty is, is laterally moving when he's high above Rosa. Uh, and because of that, he can get juggled pretty heavily. Right now at 94%, you are absolutely correct, but Luma is no longer in play. Maybe Ken's going to be able to get a juggle of his own this, this is where Ken has found all of his success, really, is when Luma's been gone. Seven, nice frame trap right there. You said it. I can't say anything better. That was, <laughs> that was just beautiful. Oh, and Ken chasing him. He's looking like a hawk right now, going to the skies, trying to get rid of the buzz. Oh, so close. If the buzz were to air dodge, it would have been over. It would have been just good awareness, recognizing the dangerous situation. And the bus said, I'm not going to give you this air dodge. This is not how I'm going to go into the loser's bracket. Ooh, and he had that jump actually scouted. Kind of had been going to that platform to try and escape the ledge pressure. Um, and he almost went towards it again, but luckily jumped out of harm's way. The bus not able to get this jab really working for him, but he is shielding immediately after this time, avoiding that damage. It was kind of an opening that Ken was using earlier. Just kind of go through the Luma jab and then apply some pressure and hit the buzz. Hit the buzz holding that shield. Not sure how he's going to get past the Sonic. Yeah, Ken's pressure right now is absolutely insane. And you can tell, you know, the buzz is filling it. We rarely see the buzz shield this much. It, spot dodges, gets the shield. Yeah, when, when, you're, when you're shielding and spot dodging like this, you're, you're, you're searching, you're grasping for straws. All right, but you know, the buzz does have Luma back in play. Is he oh. going to be able to do it? Oh, man, that was so close. I, I'm, I'm sensing a down air attempt coming in from the buzz. He went for it, but it wasn't able to connect. Crowd is getting excited, too. This could be the end of the buzz's winner's bracket. He gets the jab, has him off stage, but we've seen Ken do this. This is almost reminiscent of last game. Up tilt's going to put him above. That's where he's been having a lot of success. The buzz has a lot of trouble with Rosa, you know, again, being laterally moving. And he turns Luma around. Now he's got, you know, a combatant on each and side. This is it. Oh, I thought maybe a grab release was going to come through to Buzz, knowing his character, saying that's not going to work quite yet. We're going to see forward throw. And it doesn't do it. That's a 
Big two count. What are you doing, Earl Habner? That's a heartbreaker. 49 seconds left. You know, the Buzz can play the long game, but Ken, if he finds the opening, he can take the stock. Only 40 seconds left into this match. The Buzz searching for an answer to get rid of Ken and go into the next oh, game. Oh, dash tag. Woo. That was a no-biter. <laughs> Yo, I was on the edge of my seat. And it, it, it's really fun when you have a game that gets that close on the timer, but they're fighting the entire time. Yeah. Because that means that it's not just one guy, you know, camping on one side of the stage. That means, you know, they're getting in, they're having interaction, and then they're retreating, thinking about what they need to do next, thinking about, okay, this, this, this portion of the interaction didn't work. What can I do differently? What can I adjust to make sure that my next one goes my way? But that's happening in mere moments. Yes. And it just goes to show how absolutely, you know, cerebral these players are. Definitely, and then just the adjust, I mean, like you said, it's just adjustment after adjustment after adjustment, and they're just thinking so far in advance with all of their options. You know, because it's, you, you see the setups where it's, okay, if he does this, he's next gonna do that, and then I can do this followed by that, and it's just happening time and time again, and then adjustments on the fly, yeah, you know. And, and that's, what's, that's what's so insane, is that again, it, it, the, the adjustments are happening not over games, not over, over sets or anything like that. Moment to moment to moment, it's happening. And right now we're going back to FD because of the, the, the rule style is that if you can only, you can't go back to the most recent stage you went on. So FD does come back and play. That was Ken's first counter pick. It will be his last counter pick because he did get the break point by winning two games in a row in the middle there. But if I'm not mistaken, DeBuzz did get a victory on this stage as well. Yeah, they opened up on so. Final Destination, and DeBuzz was able to take game one. But Ken brought it around to bring game two. So I think this is definitely what Ken um, wants, and this is what he had the most success on. Right but now, DeBuzz having the success with the placement of these attacks, not even strings or combos, just knowing exactly where Ken is going to be and connecting time and time again. 81%, about 60 of that was unanswered. Buzz trying to move up a little bit. I'm surprised, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And Ken wasn't able to get through the wall. Yeah, you got to break the walls down if you're if you're if you're Ken, um, if you're uh, the Buzz even, because they're both just doing so well at spacing everything so that they never leave themselves open for a big punish. The Buzz finally kind of getting away from Ken, but it seemed like it was only for a moment because Ken right back in his face again. Gets the back air, not able to hit Rosalina, but does hit Luma. He might, Ken might consider that win if he can get rid of Luma. Luma does come over to Rosalina's aid. Yeah, and, and Ken unfortunately could not risk going for an edge guard there because he knew Luma at some point was going to come back to, to help her master, help his master. That was so tricky by DeBuzz. That up air was auto canceled onto the stage. Gets the grab because of it. Talk about new technology just happening and being built around this character by DeBuzz. And Ken actually there, um, you know, we saw earlier in game three, the Buzz chased him down when he tried to spin shot to the other side of the stage. Um, he actually reversed it and went back and, and caused the Buzz to be out of position and let himself get back to neutral. Oh, but it runs right into an up smash. That was the first, like, Logic can't even keep his headset on. He's hyping up right now. That was just so ridiculous and so smart by the Buzz. Nostradamus might have seen that in the Buzz. Nobody yeah. else. No Luma just threw it out there and was 100% correct. And right now, that has to be a confident booster for DeBuzz. Yeah, this is the first game five we've seen today, and, and this is about as close as it could be. Ken, Ken's been in this deficit four times. He's lost the stock four times first, but he still was the one with the counter pick. He still had the advantage. So we know that Ken is not out of this by any means. He has, but at no point during that did the Buzz take a stock without Luma. That has to just, you know, put Ken on his toes. And the Buzz right now, just being right, you can see the confidence pouring through this man. Yeah, compared to the end of, you know, game four, where he was, he was spot dodging, he was he was in shield, everything like that. This is a, this is a whole new DeBuzz. This is a refreshed DeBuzz. This, I, I, this sounds really interesting, but right now, I was oh, going to say, he gets the gets regular it. get up, and DeBuzz popping off. Wow. That is the biggest DeBuzz pop off I think I've ever seen. It is. It, you, the best way I could say this, for people that watch basketball, it felt like Steph Curry. You know, yeah. he throws the ball up at any point, it just goes in the hoop. The buzz hit any button and it always connected with Ken, that last stop. He was on fire right there. Yeah, shouting out is shouting out is his 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 prayer idol to give him strength to win that one. Just wow. And it all started with that up smash without Luma, you know. From there, you have to feel yourself. At this point, you're like, if that will work, 
anything will work. Mm -hmm. And it did. And, and that, you, that, know? Th you know, that that's that's the tough thing is like when you're going up against that, you're like, he just he, he just threw up, you know, a half court shot. Like, why did that work? And then all of a sudden, and then, you know, then he's just draining, you know, he gets on a run, basically. Yeah. Like, everything is working. And, and nothing is working for Ken, and it just it cost him, you know, the game, and that was that was a dang good performance by DeBuzz because he was in a big hole there. He was. I mean, by both players. This was a game five. So many of those matches were almost to that minute mark or below it. Just such phenomenal play from both players. That was crazy. Yeah, just instant classic. A treat to watch just yeah. all around. A treat to commentate, too. We were having a great time. Yeah. That, 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 is, that is the kind of top-level play that you come to tournaments like Frostbite to see.